Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today I'm going to be building a voltage meter from scratch. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumperman Tech. Today we're going to be building a voltage meter from scratch. If you find this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week and let's get straight into it. We're going to begin today's project by going over the list of components and here we have our PCB. Here is the other side of our PCB. If anyone is wondering, PCB stands for Printed Circuit Board. Here we have our display, better known as our LCD. When we hear of things of TV screens of that such, we always hear the term LCD and that stands for Liquid Crystal Display. Here we have many resistors and the resistors are coded by color and pattern. Here we have a few capacitors. On the left we have an electrolytic capacitor and the two on the right labeled with 104 are ceramic capacitors. This component here is a voltage regulator transistor. On the bottom we have our microchip and on top of it we have a socket. The socket is used to solder onto our PCB and then we can easily just slide our microchip into the socket. This piece here is our potentiometer. Here we have a small on and off switch. This component here is our diode. In the middle we have another socket where we'll be able to connect these two wires easily to our PCB. These here are two alligator clips. The golden looking pieces is just a component used to hold up your PCB and to lock it down you would use the nuts underneath. Before we begin here is a look at the schematic to what we're going to be building today. Here is the side of the PCB that we're going to be building on and the way I go about this is by evaluating what I can actually read off the PCB. That always works best with me. Schematics are quite difficult. So for instance here I can see two conductors. We have a 104 reading and C3. So typically that would be our third capacitor, capacitor 3. I remember seeing the 104 reading on our ceramic capacitor. So that would be here. Here we have another one, C1. So that would be our first capacitor, capacitor 1. Same with the 104 reading. Then we'd see these little boxes here. Um, this one says 10K, if you guys can see. So that would be our 10 kilo ohm resistor, same thing here, we would look for things like that, and so forth. Sometimes you just need to use your instincts and just see what fits where and what makes sense. Always use your background knowledge, always search the internet for advice, sometimes watch a YouTube video, that always helps. And it's important to just check out each component, learn what it does, how it works, and that's going to help with everything. I'm going to start with what I know and that is going to be our ceramic capacitors, one here and one here. Ceramic capacitors do not have polarity so you can put them in either way. I simply just slid them into place and we're going to be soldering the back side. If you notice here, I actually bent the back of the conductor so it actually holds the capacitor in place while I have it upside down. From there you can see I bend up the conductors and then I just simply take a pair of snips and cut off the excess. We have those two completed. If we look closely we see C2. That's going to be capacitor 2. I see a rating of 4.7 UF. UF is microfarad so I know the next capacitor is going to go here. I see a symbol of positive and then these dashes represent negative. So here we're going to install our electrolytic capacitor. Here's our electrolytic capacitor. If we look closely we can see one leg is longer than the other. The longer leg is our positive and the shorter leg is our negative and these the polarity does matter. So I matched everything up. I slid in the capacitor and from here we're just going to solder and continue the process.
this right here it says R6. So that is a 220 kilo ohm resistor. That is the only one that I see on this side of the board. And if we flip it around, I can see another one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven more 220 kilo ohm resistors. So we're going to be soldering on both sides of this board. I have this side in place and next I'm going to flip around the board and everywhere where I can read the resistor label, that's where I'm going to have the resistor facing. So here's a look at this side and now I'm just going to solder all of my connections. When it comes to resistors, polarity is not an issue. You can put them in either way. Got that part done. Next over here I can see it says 10K. So this is going to be our 10 kilo ohm resistor. I always like to check before I install. So between here we have 9.97 kilo ohms. So we're good to go with that resistor. The last resistor that I see is right here, and it says 110 kilo ohms. Here we have our potentiometer. I just kind of bent the back prongs and slid it in. Next, if we look closely to D1, we can see there's like a little arrow and then like a flat bar. The side of the flat bar is going to be our cathode and the opposite end is our anode. So the polarity does matter when installing your diode. If you notice the gray bar on the diode, that is going to represent our cathode and the opposite end is our anode. So this right here is going to be the positioning of our diode and of course we're going to solder it from here. Here we have S1 with six conductors. We're going to put in our switch there. From here, we're going to solder our connections. Next, if we look closely here, label at U2, we have our 7133 transistor. We're going to slide that in and solder our connections. The rounded edge is on the outside and the flat portion is on the inside. Next, we have J1 and I'm going to put the pins into these two right here. So let's put that socket in. So that's what it looks like and we're going to solder our connections. Over here on this end, looks like we're going to put our socket right here. If we look closely, there's like a little rounded edge here. And on this socket, we have a little rounded edge here. So definitely going to match those up. From here, I'm just going to solder my connections on the opposite end. So we soldered all our connections here. And if we see, we have these open slots right here and right here. And that's where we're going to place our LCD screen. If we look at the white lining, it's like in a symbol that looks just like the LCD. So we're just going to slide that right on top. Just slid in the screen. That's why it's important to take this in step by step, because if we put this first, we wouldn't be able to solder our connections for that other adapter. Here we have our little decimal points. And this is the configuration that we're going to go with. If we pay attention to our chip, we're going to notice this little notch here. And we see the little notch here, so I would put this in right on top, just following those up. Here we have our little socket, and we're just going to connect our wires into there. So here are our two wires, and we have our alligator clips we are last to connect. So we're just going to pull this out. Slide one in like this strip back the wire and then crimp it right there. So I strip back the wire. I might strip it back a little more and I can run it through this little hole through the back, maybe even wrap it around, solder it or just crimp it. I would prefer to solder it. And then this part will be done and just slide the insulation back up. And there you have it. We now have a voltage meter. So right now I have a nine volt battery connected. The only thing I did add was these little legs in the corners, no big deal. I'm gonna turn on the switch and let's see what happens.
All right, we have a reading. Let me block the light a little bit. As you can see, we got about 9.3 volts, and this is a 9 volt battery. We're gonna check with my Fluke multimeter. We're gonna check the voltage, and then we're gonna calibrate. Just set my meter to volts DC, and we have a 9.5 volt DC reading. So we're gonna calibrate our meter to this voltage, as I trust this one very much. I turn off the light so we can see it a bit better. So here's our potentiometer. We're gonna take a little screwdriver and we're just gonna adjust this knob. 9.4, right there, steady 9.5. To raise the voltage reading, we turn clockwise and to lower it, we go counterclockwise. And there you have it, everyone. We officially have a DC voltage meter. From here on, this is gonna be my little battery testing station and I'll be doing all that kind of work from here. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week and I'll catch you all next time.